Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes. Dorico 5.1 is available now, building on the features introduced in 5.0, adding numerous improvements to your engraving workflow, fixing over 140 bugs, reworking many features to make them more robust, and Dorico now ships with a new orchestral sound library for playing back your projects. Iconica Sketch is included with Dorico Elements 5 and Dorico Pro 5 and puts a complete orchestra at your fingertips. The sounds have been reworked from Steinberg's professional Iconica Sections and Players VST library, optimized for file size and CPU performance, giving you high quality playback without any complicated setup. All of this at no extra cost. It's even available on iPad when you subscribe or purchase the Lifetime Unlock and will work best on iPad Pro. I've made individual videos that showcase the new library as well as getting you up and running. We know how important engraving features are to Dorico users and we've put a lot of work into some of the areas you've asked about the most. We've completely reworked much of Dorico Pro's powerful Divisi feature so that ranges of unison music and transitions between Divisi and unison passages and between clefs and key signatures are much more reliable. Divisi also now works much better on condensed staves. You can now hide cautionary key and time signatures at the end of a system by way of notation options and individual properties. While Dorico's automatic collision avoidance means you get great looking scores without lots of manual intervention, Sometimes you might prefer certain objects not to move, even if they end up a bit close to other items. As a result, we've made it possible to turn off avoid collisions for bar numbers and for vertical lines. Text-based playing techniques are now positioned outside of formatas, while individual glyph-based playing techniques continue to be positioned inside formatas. We've added new hyphenation options for the diminuendo and decrescendo gradual dynamics and there's a new option to continue a dynamic hyphenation line after the final syllable, useful for cases such as when the gradual dynamic is followed immediately by an immediate dynamic. You can also choose for the hyphenation lines to be vertically positioned at the baseline or the half X height. Improvements to instrument changes mean that you can choose for the transition between instruments to occur either directly after the last note of the outgoing instrument or before the first note of the incoming instrument. The paragraph style for instrument change labels now includes a border, and there's a new paragraph style for instrument change warnings. You can also choose to show or hide the warnings. By default, these will be enabled for parts, but not show in the score. You can now display rhythmic cues within the staff, and they can be set to draw as slashes. There's a new option for determining the appearance of repeat ending lines before the final segment. Clefs and key signatures are now correctly positioned on staves with more or fewer than five lines. Lyric verse numbers now use their own paragraph style. It's possible to create a run of grace notes in the five-line presentation of a percussion kit, and you can optionally exclude a chord diagram from the chords used in this flow frame. Let's take a look at playback. Building on our features for more natural-sounding playback introduced in Dorico 5.0, we now balance the playback of voices within music for keyboards and other polyphonic instruments. As human performers will try to do instinctively, Dorico will now emphasize melodic lines and let the accompanying textures blend in naturally. Dorico will now also identify many contrapuntal passages and emphasize themes during playback. There's a video that goes into more detail. Please do check it out. Dorico 5.1 allows playback of holds and pauses. Formatas, caesuras, and breath marks now take effect with project-wide options and individual customization, both of how long to wait on a pause and also any gaps left before the music resumes. You can even edit the envelope in the tempo lane of the key editor. Learn all about it in my dedicated video. There's a link in the corner. Another one with its own video to check out, Dorico can now use MIDI pitch bend to play back glissandos. Now, this one's a personal favorite of mine. Dorico has always allowed you to edit the played onsets and durations of notes independently of their notated durations, allowing you to add some humanization to your performance and also trigger features of certain VST sound libraries. Now, you can lock played durations, meaning editing the notation doesn't affect the playback. This is very useful for someone like me who inputs a lot of music using real-time MIDI recording. Dorico's quantize features are brilliant, but sometimes you might still want to notate a passage a particular way 
without destroying your recorded performance. And while we're here, if you know you always want to see played durations or notated durations by default here in the key editor, you can now set that as a preference. We've made it so you can set a key command to open the loaded VST plugin window for the selected staff. I now use that all the time. You can set the expression map for a track directly in the track inspector now, rather than having to navigate the endpoint setup dialog. And you can open the expression map in question directly using this button next door. And this works for percussion maps as well. And you can check an option in the expression map dialog for legato switches that then detects whether there are chords in a legato section and removes the legato playback technique. Legato patches in many sound libraries are monophonic, in order to control a smooth transition between notes, but that prevents the playback of chords. In order to support so-called phrasing dynamics, Dorico resets the dynamic between close successive hairpins. This isn't always the desired behavior, however, so now you can control it by way of a playback option. And another clever little one, Dorico will now shorten repeated notes in keyboard instruments where you have to physically lift your fingers from the keys before restriking. It's all set up in playback options if you want to play with it, but it does make a surprising difference to the playback of piano music. The status bar readout for playing techniques now includes information about the resulting playback technique. This one's surprisingly useful. Dorico's default output levels are relatively low in order to accommodate the comfortable playback of large ensembles. However, I tend to use the preference to increase that default because I often work with solo piano projects or smaller ensembles. That can be a pain then when going back to working with a larger orchestral score. Now, I can reduce the default and use this command in the play menu to reset the output levels of all channels in the loaded project to match my new setting. Finally, for playback, pressing the stop button in the transport window when playback is stopped will send an all notes off mini message, useful for those times when you might encounter stuck notes. Input and editing now, and we've improved the new live editing feature for modifying the pitch and rhythmic position of notes. Hold down shift as you drag notes up and down to change their pitch chromatically. And live editing now works with percussion, even letting you drag notes between instruments in a percussion kit. Once again, I've made a video all about these improvements that I'd love you to check out. There's a new undo history dialogue that lets you move instantly to a specific point in your editing history for the current session. It's possible to hide playing techniques and tempo items directly in the popover as you create them, simply by putting parentheses around them. And if you wish to create writs or accelerandos with dotted lines, even if your default is set to a different style, then typing three dots after the tempo in the popover will automatically apply that appearance property. Finally, in input and editing, you can now nudge slurs in any direction using Alt and the arrow keys. And as with other engraved mode items, when you drag slurs, you can now hold Shift to constrain the movement to purely horizontal or vertical. Right, we've made some really great improvements with managing your projects. Dorico Pro 5.0 introduced features for creating and editing instruments. 5.1 now extends this functionality to allow you to edit the families that instruments belong to, including creating your own instrument families. And it's also possible to set up your own instrument score orders, which can be customary for certain styles of music. There's a video all about these two new editors that shows you everything you need to know. We've added a handy little dialog that displays all sorts of statistics about your project. This will be helpful for professional music copyists who are sometimes required to add up the number of individual bars they have copied to calculate their fee. There are several other interesting statistics though that reveal how many of which notations are in your project. And while we're in this neck of the woods, you can use simple markdown in the project info dialog to set individual words to display in bold or italic styles. A new command in the setup menu scans your project for players that don't have any music in any flows and allows you to safely remove them along with any associated layouts. And when exporting a PDF of your project, you can now choose to export separate files for each flow. Be careful to update the file name recipe to include some unique flow information in order to avoid all the files overwriting each other. Of course, it wouldn't be a Dorico release without a number of workflow improvements that hopefully make life just that tiny bit better. 
Firstly, you can now export all text information from a project in order to review or proofread that text or to populate publisher catalog databases. The resulting CSV file will contain all text from project info, text frames on each page, lyrics, staff and system attached text, tempos, dynamics, playing techniques and rehearsal marks, even markers and comments. Next, when you copy text from Dorico and paste it into another application, it will now retain the formatting. When switching between page and galley views, the zoom level will remain consistent and Dorico will attempt to restore the last view position. You can set key commands for custom zoom levels. In the key commands page of preferences, find zoom in the view menu and define a custom zoom level by entering a number in the parameter and setting a unique shortcut for it. You can set up as many as you need. You can also define key commands to open the jump bar directly in its go to or commands mode. There's a new view page numbers command that shows a large non-printing page number at the outer top corner of each page, useful when zoomed out or needing to know the number of a page when using a template that doesn't include them. When exporting graphics, either via print mode or using graphic slices in engrave mode, you can choose for the background to be transparent. And last, but by no means least, we recognize how valuable it is to be able to share your music to allow you to work with others and are committed to improving music XML interchange with other software. Dorico 5.1 sees massive improvements to music XML export, which now saves data about staff, system and page attached text, system and staff formatting, and many new notation types, ornaments and trills, arpeggios, holds and pauses, multibar rests and laissez vibre ties, as well as many more playing techniques, including various fretted instrument techniques. Dorico 5.1 is available now, and it's a free update to all existing Dorico 5 customers. It's been a long video this one, so thank you for sticking with me to the end. And please do give me a like if there's a feature you're looking forward to trying out. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.